Hey everybody, it's been a little while since I've done a video recording. I've just been focusing on work the past two years and I haven't done much work on the game development stuff. I've had a bit of free time this past week so decided to come back to it and work on some of the things I couldn't figure out two years ago so like the collision detection properly and the wall sliding so I've got that all working now and yeah a bunch of other things so at the start of this video I'll just go through or I'll demo the collision handling and then go into detail a bit with that I think that's the main thing for game development people may be interested in the rest is kind of yeah other stuff but I'll talk about that too so I'll get into it so here we have a active rotating OBB so that the wall slide will be working with that active rotation as it's calculated at the update tick the only thing is if you let it pass through you you'll get stuck in the wall the other thing is the collision box here so before a door opens it'll just be classified as axis aligned unless it's on an angle but when you open and close it the oriented bounding box will kick in and you can collide with that just like usual so even if it's closed if we try and walk as it's opening so the the, the other main things that got stuck I remember last time was the multi-wall collisions so now that's nicely handled and then with the planes as you see there and that's so the way I've handled that is kind of hacky but I'll get into that when going through the code and then like say even corners this was a, a annoying thing but yeah it's now preventing you from it, instead of choosing a a plane I guess to get the result vector it it handles that nicely so the other thing was the ramps up had a, a few annoyances there's still some imperfections like you can pass through the sides and that's because I've got the ramps and the floor just using the the normal the up normal so this the up normals in that direction so here same and there, there used to be so the velocity the y velocity uh, when you stopped it would continue so you'd jump but that's now resolved and there's a slide from gravity you'll slide down and then if we come here this is just a multiple uh, a plane that has multiple rotations so just like normal there's still a lot I want to achieve with the collision but for the most part it's been simplified so that's just the demo of the collision so now I'll go into the code for the collision detection mainly just the wall sliding so this is once you've detected that you have a collision and you need to calculate the result vector so the way I'm doing it is not in from my understanding not completely clean but it's a lot cleaner than when I was doing two years ago uh, so now I've removed all those you know different collision types like if there was a collision type with a wall do this if it was a multi wall do this so now it's just all handled as one except for the floor which uses the top normal of the model you're colliding with now with with this so I won't go into detail the the separating axis theorem which is all the stuff I talked about in those previous videos which is used to calculate whether you're colliding with an object or not whether it's yeah OBB or yeah AB, AABB it just uses the in, in built um, bounding box intersects that yeah monogame has so using that information once we know we have a collision we can now do something like this to calculate our result vector so what I'm doing first is getting the vertexes of the model and I'm doing it here because it's update the position may update 
frame by frame. So each frame we're up, we're getting the vertexes of the OBB that we're colliding with. And then we're getting the normals. So of all six planes, we're getting the normals, but we're only using the front normal and the right normal. So here, what I'm doing is creating a future bounds if we use the front normal and a future bounds if we use the right normal. And then we check if, so if we use the future bounds with the front, we check if that collision, so if that result vector is still colliding with the model. And if it is, we use the right normal. So if I can find where here, so here, if so if model is B rotatable, that's just to check whether we're using whether we're gonna compare with the OBB or the collision box, which is the axis aligned. So here it's OBB. So here if if there's an AABB, which is the player model, to the OBB, which is the say the wall you're colliding with, if we use the future bounds front when we are colliding with the model. So if there's still a collision in, in this check, then we switch the normal to use the right normal. And that it's just that. And then if also, so this is for the corners, if both the right normal and the front normal, the result vectors are still colliding with the model, then we just set the movement, X and Z movement to zero. So the player can't pass through any further the walls that they're colliding with. So it's just simply that. Uh, and then to calculate the result vector, so in this section we're just getting which normal we should use. So same for the AABB, the exact same except it's AABB to AABB. And then we are doing the dot product of the, the velocity with the normal you used. And I think that was what I was doing two years ago. I just had it on the one plane. So it only worked on one, well, on both sides, the say the front and the back, but it wouldn't work on the left and the right. So with this, at least, it does work if you're colliding with the front or the right. So it works in all those cases, as you saw in the demo. And that's just that, the dot product. And then you just subtract this result multiplied by the normal again and that gives you the result velocity you want so that's that's just this section here now the the other thing i wanted to talk about is it's i know it's probably kind of hacky switching now the only other way i could think of because i haven't found any information on how to do this properly so this is all kind of conclusions that i've come up to um, and being so close two years ago, this is kind of what what grew in it. Seeing it work, I was pretty happy with it. But in thinking about it, I think what you could also do is, let's, we have all this information here. You can create a plane, like a plane front, and then using these same vertex, vertices that we get the normal from, we could also front equals new plane and use these same upper bottom left, upper bottom right, and lower bottom left. So this will create a plane that intersects those three points in the model. So yeah, whether it's OBB or AABB. So you have your models front, and then now we have a plane that's yeah parallel, directly intersecting those three vector points that make up that that face of the model so you do that for every plane in the model and then what you can do and i don't know this has just been me speculating but once you have all six planes you then check which plane you're you're closest to and then let's say you're closest to the front plane then you use the front normal now yeah, I haven't tried that because the only thing I'm worried about is walls. If you're like near one end of a wall, 
you may detect that you're closer with, say, the side plane, even though the front plane may be the most appropriate. But, uh, like, thinking about it, it makes sense that it should choose the front plane. So that could be another a more elegant solution to this, is you generate the planes and then get the distance from each of those planes, and then whichever plane you're closest to, you use that plane's normal. Now, as well with that, there's a bit more calculations, and I haven't tried it. I haven't even yeah, tested it or anything. I don't know if it'll actually work, but it's a, kind of another solution I've been thinking about that I'm wanting to try, but I haven't, mainly because this is, it's taken a little bit to get this all working, and it's, it's almost smooth. It's almost completely handled besides those, as you saw, the ramp, the sub colliding with the sides there. So that's, um, yeah, the current, the current result vector calculations I've got going. The other thing I want to talk about is the model on model collision and also the grid system I had implemented. It wasn't really, I didn't like it, so I pretty much removed it and then reintroduced it for just the model on model collision and then kind of semi using it for the player on model collisions. But what you'll see here is, yeah, they, this was implemented even in the last video, but uh, the way it's now handling it is different. So the FPS cost is a lot better. So here we can see it's hanging around 150. Even if I look in this direction, it'll go up to 200. So much better performance. Where when I first came back to this and checked this out, the FPS was hanging around 60 and 70. So that's just re-implementing the grid and model. So the models are only trying to collide with the other models in the grid near it and then yeah you can still also collide with these models as well so I'll go into detail in that on the code as well so with the model to model collision even the player to model collision it's been changed a little bit uh, so here I'm not I'm just getting the players grid pos X and comparing it to each models if they're in the same grid or the eight cells surrounding your your grid position, then it'll just check collision detection on that instead of checking it on every single model. Uh, obviously, better than that is the octree. I still have the octree code, but again, I had difficulty setting that up, so I just went with a grid system and. The model, so the model to model collision, it's, it's kind of a mess, but it's better for the frame rate. So each model has the position X and Z, and then it's just comparing for each model those models that are in. So similar to this, but player you don't need to use the inner for loops of just it's just the one for loop here even though so we've got the outer for loop which is all models which we we need to do unfortunately because we need to check if it has colliding with the other model set and then for each model that are in the coordinate close to the model that you're running the check on then we do the collision model to model collision detection there which is just that just the same AA or AABB to OBB collision that we've talked about in previous videos so it's kind of messy code wise like these if for loop if for but like we're talking it used to be 60 FPS and that was using a grid system as well. I just didn't implement it correctly to now this Which is yeah, we, we saw like 200 FPS um, So yeah, it's just a lot cleaner there And yeah, all that's doing is again just checking the current model 
if it's set to collide with other models, then we get the grid position X and Z of the, that model, and then we're comparing it for objects in that grid. So here, grid is storing, if we look here, the grid is storing a list of models. So a little bit different to this, we're not looking through the grid. We're not looking through the list in the grid because that would mean another for loop. Uh, so we don't need to iterate through each grid cell and check which models. We just check for each model if the grid pos is matching or one off in the X or one off in the Z, then uh, yeah, then do your collision detection there. But for model to model, we need to use the models in cohort. So you're checking each model. So like in say grid pos X equals zero, Z equals five, we may have five models. So if we go back to here, this, this list, this will be five. It'll go through each and check. So the current model that you have collide with other models set on, it'll check if it's colliding with each of those models in the, in the um, models in cohort list. So it's a lot less performance intensive than having obviously n squared collision detection checks for all models and then you're just using the grid system. So that's kind of what I've implemented for model on model and player. It's, it's just using that slightly more efficient check and then bullets similar to the player. Yeah, so just like that. This could probably be improved actually now that I'm looking at it. Bullet could be handled the same way model or model collision is done. So yeah, that's that's it for the model to model collision and the grid system. So I'll quickly, I didn't show it, but the grid, grid cord is just this. That's all it is. It's just a list of models in the coordinate and grid cord is called as a 2D array, not a list in the level. So if we if we go here, find all references, there, we're just implementing a new grid, a 2D array of size X max and Z max, which yeah, adjustable. So that's it for that. Another thing I wanted to demo is the UI redesign and the new font. So most of the functionality is still the same, just a few updates like this pop-up will cover the button we just clicked and yeah just look a bit neater than just being this oversized window here so yeah all the functionality on this menu is still the same there's new load game and save game menu so if we go into it here we can yeah, load any game we want now so there's multiple loads al allowed you can save overwrite the only thing, so if you click any of these, it'll just automatically put the name in there. We can save and overwrite that. The only thing that I thought I had implemented, but it doesn't seem to be yet, is this was supposed to move to the top. But if we get out of it and go into it here, we'll see it. Well, it's not the top because when we exited the auto save and then moved to the top, but yeah, this order will update and then you can also delete the confirmation dialog or you can load it by clicking it. Confirmation to delete, you can cancel. Confirmation to override. So this is all new UI, your new UI functionality and uh, if we also the load if we move a bit. Move a bit here. Yeah. So at the moment the save the save files just storing your position and level. I think that's all it's storing at the moment. Uh, obviously, as more is 
implemented that will be added to the save file as well so yeah it's a lot i'm happier with the ui the there's a nice i've made a smaller scroll bar there and when when it gets more than the the page size there then you'll it'll have more purpose i'm thinking to hide the the scroll bar if the length of all the save buttons is less than the inner inner ui element there but i don't know just yet like for now it's just scrollable so yeah just looks well in my opinion anyway just a lot cleaner so that's the new ui and the save and load system two other minor things i wanted to talk about was the when you pause instead of going straight to the options menu you now have the the same start options here so you got you can go save load obviously start a new game if you want so the only other thing left to do is yeah instead of just having quit there'll be a quit game and then quit to main menu instead of having to go into options here and doing it and the other thing was yeah i've moved it to the center for now and just added this rotating model so i was trying out some blender this model i made just from learning first time building a model in blender it's supposed to be the delsec logo which is going to be probably improved but that's the delsec logo is just the triangle the delta but yeah that's for now what it looks like I'll probably add a background ui element for the menu when it pops up here and even here so there are two other minor things as well as this cursor now so instead of using that this hand cursor in game it just uses the aim cursor so it's a lot more appropriate for a fps and then with what i'm going to go for with the game there'll be expanding elements on the cursor based on um, your skill and so on or you, if you leave it for a bit it will zoom in to improve your accuracy uh, but yeah that's in the future so for now it's just this small crosshair that's it for everything to do with the ui and yeah some other things i just want to demo i won't go into in the code is the i've just implemented a console now so you just the tilde key you have a nice little console we can turn on debug so we see all that debug information and i'll show you this hopefully it's not too loud but and i'll talk about the uh, gun manager and all this in a bit but we get any information we need so like the bullet what i just fired a bullet there's a bullet start position direction i can see the collisions and things so it's just for the development's sake a bit more information and yeah this this console is a bit nicer at least we don't always have to see this debug info if we don't want we can just debug me on and off and then yeah we won't see any new information there we could have also done a ghost if we can if we want to just move around without clipping without any type of collision detection just like that and then toggle it back on they're the only two commands i've implemented at the moment but there's yeah easily can add more probably level transitions will be next so you probably just type a command and change the level because this is the physics uh this is just a physics test level so like this won't be the first level or anything uh, yeah so that's the console menu and a few commands and it's color i've added color code as well makes it a bit more readable instead of just having a white and you can type whatever works just like a normal console the last thing i wanted to demo was the bullets and the gun manager and all that so here we have now a new bullet system 
and it's not ray to OBB. I had trouble getting ray to OBB collision detection working, but at the moment we have a bunch of bullets. So if we say fire, I don't know if you can see that or the video recording is not picking it up, but if we look quickly away, you'll see this, there's some bullets being created and they have a velocity as usual and they will move away from the player at the player's aim position. So obviously they're just going directly where you're aiming, but further down the line we can add things like accuracy and that. There's also with that, so the bullets being OBBs, they will collide with other OBBs and even the axis aligned models. So that's all implemented. And if we look here, I don't know if you noticed that other sound that's just an audio cue that the bullets collided with something. So if we, yeah. So, and then if we turn debug mode on again, you can see I just fired two more bullets. This was all which helped me debug how the bullets were being fired before there was models and even the ray to OBB stuff. But there was a bunch of problems I had with ray to OBB, so I couldn't implement ray to OBB correctly. And then when I did have it working in a, a little bit, it it kind of pierced through all models. So if, if the ray uh, collided with any model, so like if we shot here, it would hit this model and that model. And then the, so the other thing I implemented was if it hits the first thing, it removes the ray. But then based on how the, the world is, the world models are generated, this one may be in a lower position in the list. In the list. So it detects that collision first and not this one, even though this is closer. So uh, another thing is to get distance of those models but then that's even more calculation. So I've just gone with OBB to OBB collision for the bullets. And the only downside is at high speeds, if the, yeah, if the frame rate is low and the bullet is moving fast, it may move to a position that doesn't collide with the wall. So at one frame, it may be here where I'm standing. The next frame may be here because of the high move speed. So the workaround for now is just to make the, the model, the collision boxes, so the OBB collision boxes of the bullet to be these long tubes. So the, the, the visual model of it is still just the bullet, but the actual collision box is this long tube. And it, yeah, if, if the bullet slows down, you'll see it, it collides kind of when before it touches, but the collision detection will still be correct. It's just the model, the visual part of the model that won't look like it hit the wall. But yeah, the bullets are gonna be moving way too quick anyway to notice that. And then the last thing to implement with that is, so when the bullet hits the wall, it'll draw say a mini explosion at the collision point and then as well add a slight gravity because these and that's the good thing about having these models as OBB they'll act as you know, real world objects that can have a gravity applied and yeah so that's that's everything for the to demo for the bullets I think so just this demo gun for now just to for, for testing on and that the last thing I'll just go through quickly in code is the gun manager and bullets and all that. There was a little bit of difficulty getting the, I guess from the way I implemented it, the movement vector and the model vector are slightly different. But for this whole system, we have just the gun manager and this is similar to battle court. We just have the gun manager, which stores all the, the guns in the game and then they all have certain parameters like move bullet move speed 
that that is range I think yeah range and then the sounds if there's going to be a reload sound fire rate uh, whether it's a ray or a OBB so yeah and then in gun we just have so the player player will have a equipped gun so we look here it's just a gun equipped gun and then yeah, just simply load unload all that and then in the gun we'll have the those variables we set in like range bullet speed and then here when we fire if it's not a ray so it needs a, probably a lot more work because there's still a lot that I'm going to add to it but just to demo it we've got yeah the bullet so if we press the key fire and the its the fire rate is ready it'll create a fired bullet so this creates a new bullet and the bullet takes in a position a move rotation and a model rotation so these two are different and the model path texture and bullet speed so here if you want to see the difference I've got a move rotation which is used when we calculate the the movement of the bullet and then we've got the model rotation which is the the visual of the direction the, mo the model is pointing in and that's used in the model render so if we look at the gun what we pass in for the the uh, model yeah the move rotation is this just the cam target minus the cam position which had a weird rotation in the model for some reason so the bullet just takes in the rotation which is the camera rotation which is passed in from the player if we look here camera rotation okay this could probably be yeah which is just the your your pitch roll stuff so that's the the bullets and the gun manager stuff um, but yeah that's pretty much all the code I was going to show uh, thanks for watching uh, I've tried to make this a bit more segmented and talked about that specific thing for the segment and yeah that's what I've been working on this past week uh, this kind of I'll be working on in my spare time so progress probably will be slow like mainly on weekends so I'll work on this maybe time after work I'll work on this but I do want to turn it into something uh, I think if you know from this menu even the kind of the style you may see the influence the game that's influencing it and what I want to go for but uh yeah like I want to make a pretty decent game now even if it takes quite some time because like I spent two years on Lords of Delusion and never released that and then released Battle Court which was really small scope and I think I can make something really decent with a nice story and some good physics and everything but yeah and show how much I've improved in coding but yeah so I'll try and keep uploading but the process will be very slow uh, yeah so thanks for watching everyone hope you enjoyed the video